We out here in the south side of Chicago. What do they call Chicago, the south side? Uh, and the west side, too. Chirac. 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 That's, Chirac. that's what they call it. And, pe and, and, and really, the, the, the murders and the crime and the hopelessness, the desperation we have in, in some part, all of Chicago ain't like that. But some people would like that. It's really, it's a, the, what we see is a, it's really manifest, it's manifesting what's in the brain. Absolutely. What's inside them. Absolutely. It's, it's uh, some people, you can, like I said, you can lead the horse to water, but they can't make him drink. Do you, do people have to hit rock bottom before they see the light? You know what? I was talking with one of my members and I was one of those, I was one of those people I had. I didn't believe fat meat was greasy. Mm. You know, if you told me the fire was hot, and yeah, okay, that might be burning you, but it ain't going to burn me. I had to put my hand in. But some people learn through other people's experiences. They don't have to hit rock bottom. They can see, uh-oh, that's not where I want to go. But we're not all like that. Each of us has chosen, because we're at choice every moment of our lives. Some of us have chosen to learn lessons uh, the hard way. Some of us have chosen to live vicariously through other people's negative experiences. Oh, I see what that got them. No, I don't think I want to do that. But some of us, oh, that don't apply to me. So it, everybody doesn't have to hit rock bottom before they can come up. But some people do. And it's a good thing because when you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. I'm saying, and is it, and we, because we're taking the show to, you know, at the end of the year to show in the first year so people can have their New Year's resolutions. What I'm trying to say is that, is that sometimes we need to, we need to change. We've been going to this, this particular church or church for many years and we need to stop. And that's, and we've been going to uh, these folks' house. <laughs> oh, we've been fr friends with these folks, these friends for many years. And it may be a time that we have to let this church go, these friends go, these family members. Exactly. We have to let them go or at least distance ourselves from them. What's that guy named Bob Proctor? Mm -hmm. He says, uh, <laughs> you don't go as often and you don't stay as long. Mm -hmm. and, you know, friends and family, you don't go as often and you just don't stay as long. Some people we need to let go. Absolutely. You know, uh, examination and uh, discrimination. You have to be able to look, say for instance, you're going to a particular church. Is that church helping you to grow? Do you feel spiritually fulfilled? Are you, are you, uh, are you going just because this is the place to go? Or are you actually learning something? And family, if, if somebody's toxic, and I say this with all humility, if somebody's toxic, I don't care if it's mama, daddy, Sister, brother, daughter, granddaughter, grandson, whoever it is, you can love them, but love them at a distance. Because toxicity is just like, I always say this, you know, negativity is just like a cold. You, it's contagious. You're around them and you go in feeling good and when you come out you feel terrible. They done sucked up all your good and you done grabbed a hold of their bad. Because there is always an exchange of energy between everyone. So if this person is taking all your good and there's not an even exchange, then you need to stay away from them. Because when you walk into their house or their business or wherever it is, you're going to absorb the energy that's already there. So unless that, that energy is on par with you, then let it go. And try to allow yourself, get quiet, be still. You know, people, you got to have the music on. You got to have the TV on. You got to have the earphones in your ear. Get quiet. Be still and know. Just be still and listen to that still small voice within yourself. And let it lead God and direct you. You might have all the good intentions of going uh, the X, Y, Z. And then you sit down before you go just to relax and calm yourself. And something inside of you says, you know what? That might not be the best place to go. Let me change my itinerary. Let me do something else. Because uh, you always have an early warning signal. You know, you know who's, who's, who's uh, you should avoid and who you shouldn't. Yeah. Because they may, you may be sitting in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we do live in Chirac. You don't want to be with the wrong person at the wrong time. I think a lot of us, people, the folks at home, I'm just assuming that we're afraid of being lonely. I don't care if you're a teenager, 20-year-old, in your 60s or 70s. We're afraid of letting go of some of the, the, our, the, the, the churches, of, uh, that school, that, that, those people, that family member, those family members. We're afraid of, of that old boyfriend or old girlfriend or who, your wife, your husband. 
We're afraid of letting go because I think we're afraid of being lonely. It goes back to what I just said. If you get quiet and you meditate, you realize that you are self-fulfilled. And once you become aware that you are not needy, that if you, if you are uh, self-fulfilled, you gravitate towards things that are going to only uh, encourage you to be more empowered. You're not going to gravitate towards people or conditions or situations that are going to make you needy, that are going to take away your power. You want to be self-empowered. You want to be self-fulfilled. You want to be self-actualized. But you got to get quiet to do it. I is needy. I'm real needy. People send messages on the, on the, on the internet and say, Mark, you need. I, have, I, need, I don't want to be lonely. What's that old song? I just want to be loved and needed. Mm. I just don't want to be lonely. Well, you didn't raise 25 kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being alone. What I'm saying, a lot of folks, they have trouble. I mean, I have trouble. Like, you come home to be in a quiet house without the TV and not the radio. I think one motivational guy, Brian Tracy, somebody, he quoted some famous philosopher saying, like, all the man's problems and woman's problems, it stems from not being able to sit quietly by themselves. That's true. I used to have to have an entourage. And that was because I didn't have any confidence in my uh, oneness with, with my creator and with my higher self. I had to have other people around me. Now, in this point in my life, and I would say in the last 20, 30 years, this has be I'd say 20 years, not 30, this has begun to change. It takes time to do this. Now, there are some people who are born introverts. They don't have to be around anybody. They don't, they don't feel lonely. They can feel their time, and they can be happy. The key is not to be a recluse or a hermit and to be miserable, miserable, but to be, be able to be by yourself and not be lonely. And I want to say something to you. Some of the most loneliest times that I've ever experienced have been in the company of other people. If you want to be miserable, have a partner or spouse who's non-communicative, and you're there with them. You may be with somebody, you may not be alone, but you can be very lonely. Are, are some of us watching this a video right now, Lydia Shun, are we in denial? We're, we're actually unhappy. We're actually miserable. There's a smile on my face. How that song, <laughs> the tears of a clown? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a smile on my face, you know, and I'm pretending. Everybody, I mean, so, I mean, I know we need to go to someone like yourself. I think that you, I knew you have to, you know, go within. You know, but you, you still need some. You got to. But you still need some help. You do. You, you know, we have so many facades that we put up because we have been brainwashed to think that we're not good enough. Yeah. We're not enough. Yeah. You know, but you have to be able to have be fearless and pull away some of these facades that you put on for other people, and you may not be able to do that by yourself. One of my uh, uh, assistant ministers, he was saying that he went to a gathering of quote-unquote spiritual beings, and he called them pretenders. They weren't even contenders. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they're just pretending to have all this wisdom and light and love. He said, they're not even in the running to, to be able to manifest and demonstrate this. So, you know, we got to stop pretending. Let it, let it go. Let it be. Be who you are. If you only knew who and what you are, you would be so astounded. You would be so amazed. You would, it's awesome. But in order to find that out, you got to get quiet and be by yourself. You know, uh, John the Revelator, they called it. When he was uh, writing the book of Revelations, the Spirit of God had taken him by himself and put him on an island the island of Platmos, so that he could speak to him and reveal to him all these uh, these 22 books of the Bible. But Because if you touch it, chatting with Susie, watching Scandal, or uh, uh, doing your, your crossword puzzle, or on the phone, or whatever you're doing, you're, you are being distracted from what you could be doing. You could be enjoying yourself. You could be finding out exactly 
uh, of the potential and the greatness that's already within you. Instead of looking for someone else to give you these answers, they would come to you automatically and you would be able to follow your intuition because you would trust yourself. Uh, we've been ordinary for so long. We've just been regular folks for so long. I think a lot of folks, including myself, don't see ourselves uh, going beyond who we think we are. Everybody's capable of doing something extraordinary. You can be the most ordinary person and make an extraordinary cake. But what I'm saying, you know, we see, we, we measure our lives to these folks we see on TV. You know, because most Americans make under 50000 the rest make under 100000 uh, Very few people make over two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year. In the United States. True. But we see these folks who make, you know, a million dollars a year. And we compare ourselves to the rich and famous. And we say, we ain't rich and famous. We ain't nothing. You know, and that's, that's, that's true. We're not, everybody's not rich and famous. And I won't say everybody has the potential to be rich and famous. Because fame is fleeting. It's flickle. People make you famous. And they'll change on you. You know, you can be a one-hit wonder. And that's it. But what you, what you can be, you can be the best you that you can be. You can have the most success at whatever it is that brings you joy. You know, that's more important than being on uh, national TV and going home and having to find a, uh, some Xanax and, and, and a drink. How many, how many times do we hear about poor celebrities, bless their hearts, who have overdosed because they were miserable? We look at them and think that they're, that we're looking at the outer. We're not looking at the inner. We don't know what's going on inside closed doors. Isn't that right? We look at our friends and we think that they're having a wonderful marriage and they're just happy and they're just the ideal uh, family. And next thing you know, that's kaput. You cannot judge yourself by what's going on outside of you. You can only judge what's going on in you. Yeah, but, but the mother folks, they got a better car than me. They got a nicer house than me. And they got they more got, bills than you. And, no, but they got, I know some guys, they a player. They got women, and I'm by myself. This other young lady, you know, you people jealous of women. She got so many boyfriends. Yeah. We feel inadequate because we feel like other folks got more than us. So we feel that like something's wrong. That's that. why I'm saying you cannot judge yourself by what someone else has. You can't even judge by what you have. Your material, uh, um, your material things and the things that surround you, do, you can't equate yourself with materialism. You, you can have a closet full of clothes. You can have shoes from up the kazoo. You can have a bank account that you know, rivals uh, uh, someone who's very wealthy. But that, does not, that is not you. These are things that you have acquired. That is not you because that can be wiped out in an instant. What is important is how do you feel about you? How do you equate your spiritual self? Do you, do you recognize that you are a spiritual being having a human experience? This is just an experience. Anything that you can acquire, anything that you can see, touch, feel, or taste can be wiped out at a moment's notice. Look at uh, uh, some of the disasters that we see right, that are happening right and left so rapidly. Homes are wiped out. Those people who that uh, just suffered that catastrophic uh, typhoon in the Philippines, those people in Illinois that had the tornado, they had all, all probably just what they thought they wanted, and it was wiped out instantaneously. You cannot equate your success by what you have or what people think of you. It don't matter what somebody thinks about you. What do you think about you?